We all need to do our part to keep ourselves, our loved ones, and our neighbors safe. That's every person, every business working together. And now, Canada's air carriers are stepping up to protect Canadians too. The government and Canada's main airlines have agreed to suspend service to sun destinations right away. Air Canada, WestJet, Sunwing and Air Transat are cancelling air service to all Caribbean destinations and Mexico starting this Sunday up until April 30th. They will be making arrangements with their customers who are currently on a trip in these regions to organize their return flights. I'd like to acknowledge the leadership of Air Canada, WestJet, Sunwing and Air Transat in making this commitment to suspend flights and be such strong partners in the fight to curb the spread of COVID-19 and its variants. We appreciate the work the Canadian Airlines and their frontline workers have done to make air travel safer and to bring Canadians home when this pandemic struck last spring. With the challenges we currently face with COVID-19, both here at home and abroad, we all agree that now is just not the time to be flying. By putting in place these tough measures now, we can look forward to a better time when we can all plan those vacations. Our government is committed to the safe restart and recovery of the Canadian travel and tourism sector as soon as conditions approve, ideally later this year. As part of this effort, the Government of Canada has committed to work with the major airlines on the future relationship between testing and quarantine requirements. This will enable the safe, gradual return to international air travel grounded in science and evidence. On top of these flight cancellations, we're bringing in other measures as well. Starting next week, all international passenger flights must land only at the following four airports. Vancouver, Calgary, Toronto and Montreal. In addition to the pre-boarding test we already acquire, as soon as possible in the coming weeks, we will be introducing mandatory PCR testing at the airport for people returning to Canada. Travelers will then have to wait for up to three days at an approved hotel for their test results at their own expense, which is expected to be more than $2,000. Those with negative test results will then be able to quarantine at home under significantly increased surveillance and enforcement. Those with positive tests will be immediately required to quarantine in designated government facilities to make sure they're not carrying variants of potential concern. We will also, in the coming weeks, be requiring non-essential travellers to show a negative test before entry at the land border with the US, and we're working to stand up additional testing requirements for land travel. Just like vaccines, I know that border measures are also on a lot of people's minds. Recently, I had a great chat with Annette from Ottawa. She had written to me about people vacationing abroad and, as she put it, ignoring rules that had been in place for quite some time. Annette, today I want to tell you what else we're going to be doing about this. In addition to suspending flights to sun destinations, international flights are now arriving at only four major Canadian airports. And no matter the flight, everyone must have proof of a negative PCR test taken within 72 hours of boarding. Starting today, people returning by land borders will also need to show proof of a negative PCR test taken within 72 hours before arrival. And all returning travellers must quarantine for 14 days after coming home or risk heavy fines and possible jail time. These are some of the strongest measures in the world. But with new variants emerging, we're stepping them up even further. Later today, Ministers Haidu, Blair and Leblanc will announce the details of new testing, quarantine and enforcement for everyone flying or driving back to Canada. These measures will take effect starting February 22nd.
Putting these additional measures in place is a true team effort. To Canadian Airlines and border, effort, border agents, thank you. To public health employees, to hotel workers and owners, thank you for all the work you're doing and for doing your part. These border measures will help stop the spread of COVID-19 and new variants. And that's not all we're doing on that front. We're also investing $53 million for an integrated variance of concern strategy to help monitor variants like the ones first detected in the UK and South Africa. You might be worried about these new strains. Well, we're putting our best experts on it. Researchers, epidemiologists, modelers. With investments like this, Canada is ready to detect, track and treat new cases. I know you're probably uh, watching the news these days attentively as everyone is and uh, watching the positive sign of the cases going down across the country. That is uh, a good step in the right direction, but we also know at the same time the new variants that are more communicable, uh, more easily transmitted, are increasingly out there. So we need to stay careful. You are doing a great job making the sacrifices necessary that have shown us on the right track. But we're going to need to stay vigilant. We're going to need to be careful uh, if we're going to make it through this spring uh, in the best possible way uh, to be able to enjoy uh, a better future for all. Because nobody wants a third wave to start, particularly not one comprised of new, more communicable vari uh, variants that uh, can cause real challenges. Today, I also want to talk about what we're doing to support everyone, no matter who you are, during this global crisis. In the last year, we've seen once again how tough times fall first and hardest on the most vulnerable. The legacy of this pandemic must not be some people getting ahead while others fall behind. Instead, it must be a stronger, fairer Canada for everyone. And that includes for women and girls. Already, we've invested in everything from safe places for women and girls to stay to moving forward on an action plan for women in the economy. And we're not stopping there. As Minister Mosef announced yesterday, we're launching feminist response and recovery funding. This will support organizations that work to end violence against women and girls, that invest in their economic security, and that empower women leaders. Better days are ahead of us. On that note, I want to end this morning by wishing everyone a happy Lunar New Year, particularly to those from East Asian communities. The Year of the Ox is particularly apropos for this particular time we're in, as it's about hard work, perseverance and trustworthiness. I think that's exactly what's going to get us through the coming months. Instead of lion dances and fireworks, this year you might be celebrating by delivering PPE to frontline workers or dropping off groceries to elderly neighbours. Every day you remind us that diversity is our strength and it's something that we will always defend. There's no place in this country for hate or racism. We will always stand against anti-Asian racism and against all forms of racism and discrimination. We are stronger together today and always. Bon nouvel an lunaire tout le monde. Kamun, Sheshe, comme ça, Hamnida.